starting. This place really is creepy, isn't it? You might find a vampire here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Well, being a dead room, it's probably full of spirits of the dissect of the dissected. Actually, there's a lot of pleasing sensations in the air. Well, being a dead room, Corona Pelling needs a bold scent like that to mask the odor of death. Um, Iris. Do you think you can shut the fuck up and change the subject? <laughs> what was that? What? Ah! Um, Dr. Gory? <laughs> what? Um, that noise before. I was sharpening my tools. I'd be dead meat if I didn't keep a perfectly keen edge on them. Dead meat. James A. Janice! Kill count. Right, uh, Ria Nosuke, you're gonna end up on the kill count. <laughs> Is he ever gonna do a, a kill count series on on Ace of, on the Ace Attorney games? <laughs> no, I'm still waiting for that. I'm still waiting for that kill count of Danganronpa two. Yeah. Once again, Mikan's definitely gonna get the mul yeah. machete for the whole series. <laughs> the following the collagen fi fibra ah. fibrous in the d in the, in uh, the dermis. Let me try that again. I'm following the collagen fibers in the dermis, an extreme, ex expertly sharpened scalpel, cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? Oh, yes, please! I'd love to see! Give me your arm. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll do nicely. No! <laughs> huh? No! No, I wouldn't do nicely at all! I mean, maybe some other time. It wasn't a no. Was that a tut? Well, he came here to ask questions, so... I'm leaving. <laughs> um, we have actually met before. I'm a lawyer, if you remember. You're not dead yet. What? So Mama said I wasn't to cut you open. She's so strict about things like that. Well, good. Dr. Scythe has some scruples, at least. Scrupulous, at least. Oh dear. It looks like she's not interested in talking to us. For the time being, anyway. For the time being? You mean, until we die? I hope that's a way, I hope that's a way off. I can arrange that. Sorry, but I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. Too damn bad! Surely there's some less drastic way of making him listen. Stop. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Oh, wrong thing. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to show you this. Shit. You just showed me some document that you weren't supposed to. It's time to fucking die. <laughs> Dr. Gory, we actually came here to ask you about this. He was very good. Good? Sorry? His skin didn't snag my blade once. And very less ma very little mess. His joints dislocated easily, and his muscle tissue was a pleasure to work with. Jesus. We can skip those details. But 
There is one thing about the report that caught my attention. You don't seem to have recorded a time of death. Shit. Hey! That's not my fault. Oh! That made me jump. Then please, tell us what happened. Do we have an age now for her? Yep, 19. 19? She's cute. Yeah, I love her design. So why does the autopsy report include the victim's time of death then? It's really the most crucial detail. I was told not to write it. What? By whom? Male Strongheart. Joe. The Lord Chief God Justice. God damn it, fucking Strongheart. He came here. Lord Strongheart came? I've done nothing wrong. He come? <laughs> what? He said that from the witness statements about the gunshot and the other evidence, it was obvious. The man clearly died at 5 p.m. on the 1st November when the gunshot was heard at the motorcycle outside. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the time of death he wrote on the report. He didn't write anything. Was there some reason you didn't include it? Dr. Gori? If you're hiding something under Lord Strongheart's instructions, then sooner or later, you're going to go to the same way as your mother. Hmm. Give it here, then. Hmm? What's she scribbling so furiously? There. You, you've written... Indeterminate. But... Oh. Hmm. So they have no idea. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Why was the time of death indeterminate? When the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. So the time of death could easily have con coincided with when the gunshot was heard. But, there was one small discrepancy. We hate those. What discrepancy? There was some fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. And that fish has started to rot. Mm. What? Did the victim like fried... F uh, did the victim like fried fish, he presumably liked to eat it before it went off. Well... Yes. What are you really trying to say? It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate the... Is that even possible to do? Yes, very easy. Theoretically, if you were to chill the body in ice, you could delay the onset of purification. That did happen in Spirit of Justice. And the overcoat was on the body at the time. Then only the fish could have started to rot. With today's science, it's not yet possible to determine if the body was chilled or not. With today's science, it's advanced enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. It's obviously Mr. Freeze. But surely... To chill a corpse like that would require an enormous electrical refrigerator. And I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No, definitely not. But maybe in a factory? Or some other special places? I don't recall seeing any factories or such like on Fresno Street, though. I wonder if the inspector's body had been chilled somehow. What might the actual time of death had been? I couldn't say for sure. But at the most, it might have been a day earlier. No! In other words, you corroborate your previous deduction, Mr. Naruhobo. <coughs> that Inspector Gregson was killed the day before his body was discovered, at a different location. 
did you inform Lord Strongkar of this possibility? He simply said that there was no electrical refrigerators of that size in the vicinity. Oh yes, one other thing. It's something the governor of the Barclay prison told us. He said that your mother, Dr. Scythe, was responsible for confirming the death of the professor after his execution. The professor. Apparently you always enjoy listening to your mother's stories about her work, so... We were wondering if you might know something about what happened ten years ago? That's not all Mama did. Sorry? My Mama... Carried out the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks as well. Oh boy. What? Really? The brother of Lord Van Zeeks? The professor's vinyl victim? The idea of carrying out an autopsy on a member of the aristocracy was completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted, and it was miraculously authorized. But detective being Inspector Gregson, of course. Quite an accomplishment for one man. That autopsy provided the vital clue needed to arrest the killer. And Mama was there for that historic event. What does... What does all this mean? You know, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. The Professor and Clint Van Zeeks. They both spent their final moments before their burial on that dissection table there. So this lab, Mama's lab, was instrumental in some of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. I wonder if you tell us more about exactly what happened back then, Dr. Gory? The professor's execution was Mama's first big case. She had to be in attendee. Uh, she had to be in attendant at Barclay Prison Execution Chamber and signed a certificate to confirm the convict's death. Mama is the best coroner in the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't. But the execution didn't actually take place. No, and worse still, Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. Mm. I didn't want to know. Oh dear, you found out recently, you mean? I believed in her, and Mama, but... Now I wonder if I'm starting down that same path as her. You mean because you omitted the time of death on this autopsy report? But that's because Lord Strongheart forbade you from including it. Just like Mama. I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. Yes, that's my feeling as well. There's no doubt that there were powerful forces at play ten years ago. The execution couldn't have been staged without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously, the prison governor must have, have been in on it as well. The big man with the little handcuffs? According to what he told us. He was tricked by the chief warder. He says he knew nothing about it. Of course he said that. I say the same thing. Just who was behind that jailbreak all those years ago? Joker. You mentioned the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks. It was at the time when carrying out autopsy of murder victim was very unusual. It's still not a practice that's observed in our country, even now. 
it turned out that he was the professor's last. Uh, uh, it turned out that he was the professor's final victim, and when the autopsy was performed, Mama was present, although only as a secondary assistant. The person leading the procedure was called Dr. John H. Wilson. What? Jesus. That's right, my daddy! And there was one other person present, the primary assistant. He was a visiting student from the Far East. Oh, we got Toba! Wait, a visiting student? It must have been my father. You think Mikotoba? I had no idea Professor Mikotoba had been involved in something so important. And he omitted to tell me! But the outcome. Yeah. But the outcome of that historic autopsy was the discovery of a vital piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor. So that's how they came to identify Genshin Asogi as the infamous mass murderer. Do you happen to know anything about the piece of evidence? Can you tell us any more? Would you like to see the records for yourself? What? what? Would that be alright? What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? They're filed under V at the back of those cupboards with the other records from the last decade. Thank you! Wake the fuck up, Samurai! We got a city to burn! Let's see, Van Zeeks, Van Zeeks. Um, that's strange. Don't tell me they've been stolen! No, 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 of course someone what fucking the stole it. They aren't here! There's nothing other than Van Zeeks, god damn it! There must be! Perhaps somebody took them away! No. No one's allowed to take documents related to the professor's case out of this room. But you're right. They're gone! You know, I, you know, I am a vampire. I can just get out of jail. <laughs> well, when was the last time somebody looked at them? Do you remember? I'm only staying in here just to humor you. <laughs> it was. Oh yes, I remember now. It was two years ago. A consulting detective came one day saying that he liked to see she the records. She looks record. like if Kyoko... She looks like if Kyoko got really into Evanescence. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't- you don't mean... Sherlock Sholmes was his What?! Name. What the fuck?! Deep down, I knew that was coming. Do you think... He stole the records. Oh no, surely not. I was happy, right? <laughs> wow, I'm so surprised that Sherlock Holmes is kind of shady. He's discombobulated me with this. What the fuck? Iris? I'm, I've been discombobulated. Um, Bruno, I hope you don't mind, but... What is it, Iris? Are you leaving? I just remembered something very important I have to do. I'm going to have to leave you now. Oh, this is very sudden, Iris. Well, we'll come with you then. Oh no! No, no! There's no need! When Reno can take your time here. Bye for now then. Good luck. Don't want, don't want to be a head subject. Wait a minute, little girl. Huh? Me? I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? <laughs> Have you, Iris? Yes. Two years ago, oh boy. that detective came. You were with him, weren't you? You were a living specimen then, too. That's the way it usually works, yes? Was I? I, I really don't remember. Anyway, sorry, but I must die. 
Ash? Wait, Iris. I'll brew up a pup for you when you get home. Oh, uh, she's definitely involved in all this too. Jesus Christ! What's the matter with her? She's behaving really strangely all of a sudden. Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer. Congratulations, either. Narahodo! You're the only one vouch in all of London vouching for Van Zeeks. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I had any visitors. It was really fun. But next time you come, I prefer if you were ready for dissection. I can't make any promises, sorry! I can. It's a bit of strange that the records of Clint Van Zeke's autopsy have disappeared. But I think we asked all we can. All we came to ask. What an interesting character she was. Alright, time to add her to her- time to add her to my harem. <laughs> harem? Yeah. The police are still busily investigating him here then. Folks, once again we have proof that Nick's taste is only in his mouth. But she is nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since the last time we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh, it appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. I wonder to whom it belongs. There are some initials on the outside. Look, T G. Yep, Tobias Gregson. Let's ask one of the policemen. They know how it came to be here. Hey, Gina. Boy, what do you think you're doing? Boy, here eh? That's my trunk, that is! Hands off! Yeah. Where were you hiding? I don't know. You leave something unintended for a few seconds, and every Tom, Dick, and Harari's got his great eye got his gritty eyes on it. Um, just a wild guess, Gina, but What? Spit it out, Odo! Is it fair to say that you only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk goes with me everywhere! Always has! Where have you been the last year? Not in a courtroom. <laughs> Why not to incur your wrath, mainly? You should hear them talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. They're saying that it was the boss who killed all them bludgers. Ah, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all them criminals what got off scot free. Yes, the one prosecuted by Lord Van Zeeks, who used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was that bloomin' Reaper giving the orders, weren't it? But, why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killing? There was a notebook hidden in his office. 
Oh no. It doesn't sound good. It had details about all the crimes that have been pegged as the Reaper's work. What? Oh, did you see Gino? Did you see that notebook? They wouldn't flame and let me! Cause I'm just an apprentice apparently! But it was me who found it! And he was my boss! That's right. I was pretty miffed about it, so... I sneaked a peek at what it said anyway. That's our Gina. That's our Gina! So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Way well, I see it. It's my right to read what he wrote. True. And what had he written, you know? Dates, times, places, names, and all long list of them. All details about the blood are supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly. That's what I said. That's the first thing you'd think, right? As it happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At oh the, boy. At the end of the list? You mean... Pretty sure the date against it was 31st October. Oh. Uh. That can't oh. be his notebook. The day before the inspector was found dead! So, what was the odd name? It wasn't like a name I've ever seen before. It was something like, um... I'm ready for a bombshell. Nah, it's no good. I can't remember- Fucking Christ! I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, to put it that way. Uh... Who from Japan fucking died? What a pity. What a pity. <laughs> please don't let him in, Natsume. Please. <laughs> now something else too. Your dad is the. Oh, but the same name? What the fuck? There was something else too. I don't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. That's uh, creepy. Shit. Oh. Yeah, well. it's talking about shit. Shit it was. Don't suppose it means anything, but... Ah yes, my favorite killer. Assassin. Did you say Shin? Eh? What does it mean? Something? Lord Van Zeek knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now, we found out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook. Oh god, this isn't looking good. Probably logging all the kills she did. We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating in that. You've been investigating. The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. The day before? That would be the undercover investigation to the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? Found him code for pretending to be him anyway. Didn't, but pretending pretend to be him, didn't you, Odo? Yes. It was Mr. Viju who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing at Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't seen the only one turning stuff up. 
I got my own ways of getting results. <laughs> Toby! And me and my partner you get together. There's nothing we can track down. <laughs> oh, little Toby! He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked anything down then? He's close. What you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you though. Police business, innit? Ah. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help, Clearly this is good. you know who to turn to, right? Me and the L out here. That ain't Luna. <laughs> right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honest. The hellhound. <laughs> um, Gina, about your hellhound there. <laughs> Luna! Chief Inspector uh, Toby, you mean? He's the pride of the force, he is. That's not a hellhound. I've seen a hellhound. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. If you're in Britain, wonderful compliment, it seems. For a canine, at least. It should be. After all, in the great expedition, expedition, uh, expedition, uh, exhibition phase <laughs> the other day, it was Toby here who managed to locate Jarvis' workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what this super dog can do, eh? Do you have something the chief inspector could catch the scent of, I wonder? Take that! Well, Chief Inspector Toby? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chief Inspector Toby, fucking falls on the ground dead. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this. He he might be a little too keen, don't you think? Whoa! <laughs> ah! The sheep inspector made short work of Gina there. Look what he's gone to. That trunk clearly smells a very strong scent. Of Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. Yeah, we I kinda figured that out. Mm-hmm. Oh, alright. It's a fair cop, I suppose. And you nearly got away with it too. If it weren't if it weren't for those meddling lawyers. We want for that meddling Toby. I would have gotten away with the two if it won't be meddling kids. Well, so probably Chief Inspector Toby's nose what it can You know, cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us. Yeah, that was a bit of a bloomer, wasn't it? That's enough now then, Gina. Eh? I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. It, it wasn't like that. It, it just warned. What are you talking about? I don't know what's going through that any yours, but that ain't what happened. All right then. What did happen? Well, like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Toby have a whiff of the boss's overcoat. And as soon as I'd done that, it went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To a sandwich? Not a bag of chips? 
Oh. Jeez. Sandwich no, fucking no. stole it. I believe she's a the witness. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich! Yeah, he had it in between them one and balls of his! The boss is trunk! You mean, when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here? Exactly! He knocked it from the scene! God damn it, sandwich. Gorgeous. <laughs> Man, the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what he said? Did you add mustard to it? You know I heard enough Deadly Force authorized to beat this old man. I, I thought it uh, my first good price, and the chap wouldn't be eating anymore, so... But so I did no more. <laughs> <laughs> Adam? From Aspen? Would you like Adam and Eve the chick of it, eh? Soon the dead boss is stuffed to flog! So Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime, then? So anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured it might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, eh? Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find their answer to that question together. Damn! Uh, it should, but Tobias adopted Gina, so technically it belongs to her, so... I think perhaps that truck should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I am the police! <laughs> Gina, if you wouldn't mind... I am the nurse! Could we maybe examine it? It's like, call, call the police! I am the police. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do what you want with it. I'm taking. We're taking this now. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the evidence. Uh, is that Toby? What's the matter with Toby? Oh, yeah. Why is he acting so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? Mr. Naruhodo, be careful! It must be the trunk! Ah! 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 Dog jump scare. Toby! Oi! What are you doing? They're gonna lick his face off! Oh, that FNAF jump scare. <laughs> we need to edit it so it has a fucking FNAF jump scare sound over it. <laughs> oh god, am I at the hospital? No, I'm at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> trying to take you over the board. <laughs> I'm gonna make that edit when I get my new phone. Nice. Ah, oh, 
Finally awake. <laughs> ah, caught it is again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. After all, to drop dead after a moderate licking by a small terry was most unseemly. <laughs> One day he's gonna clonk his head. <laughs> he's gonna end up like Kazuma. Here, Mr. Mr. Jones. Yeah. Jones. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm oh, fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Oh, what's this on my head? A, b a bandage? Damn. Sadly, we had no ice, so that's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Don't worry, Mr. Naruhodo. First aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So, let it take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Uh, the bump on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. <laughs> Whenever you feel ready then. Hey, Gina, your fucking dog attacked me. <laughs> Somebody very haphazardly nailed those boards over the broken glass, haven't they? You could even really call it a window anymore. Well, if you remember the window in Mr. Natsume's room, that was totally blocked up with bricks, so... You could say nothing more about it. I'm starting to feel even more sorry for Mr. Natsume now. You got something to say, Gina? Gina, I'm really sorry. It's daft, ain't it? If you ask me a year ago, the cops could go hang for it all I cared. We've got our police, ain't we? To catch the bludgers. So us divers can go about our business in peace. Wait, sorry? I, I don't think I can have her I don't think I can hear that properly. He said he was gonna teach me everything I need to know to be a detective. The only going around to show me is where the best flaming fish and chip shops are! Actually, that reminds me. Gregson said he was supposed to be going to Paris in the near future, didn't he? Hey, when you're a cop, you gotta get something to eat after a break. Something wrong? Actually- oh, no. I'm sure I'm eating too much in But the timing seems very coincidental. Hmm. You know, the boss was acting a bit strange recently. Like he was always in a rush. Oh, wait, yeah, because you were trying to get Gina away from Van Zeke's or the Reaper. Yeah. Oh. 
What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck are you what? doing? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what was in that tea? <laughs> what on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no. It's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. What? That's the least of my concern. Why is Miko Toba dead? Um, I was... Iris, what's the matter? Yeah. Susato, do you not recognize your dad? Um, who's that sprawling? I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there. Iris? Um... Is she even listening? Excuse me, sir! I do apologize for troubling you while you're singing to Merlet, but... Would you be kind enough to explain the situation? Well, that worked. He is drunk! <laughs> a crooning gentleman and a mute young girl have had a tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction within me to find their voices too. Uh, Mr. Schultz, do you mean it? Mm. The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. One melody sings a reunion full of nostalgia. Whereas the other is a... More will seem about the great secret you're trying to desperately to conceal, Iris. She's turned as white as a sheep. So as usual, you've instantly seen to the very heart of the matter. And by the time my own brief performance is over, I feel sure the gentleman's song will reach its final. Finale. No. So then, to music land where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. I forgot to change my outfit. Pray <laughs> no, don't it. change it. <laughs> Pray to enjoy Herlock Sholmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh, that shows him in his different outfit. In his casual outfit. Ah! Firstly, we consider the gentleman nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of his that? language. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when he asks to desist. <laughs> so, why is the man here at all, and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clean no to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritating wobbling is revealed by the herbal tea. You drugged it! <laughs> you obviously offered our German guests a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavor had made the man's spirit soar. And resulted in the joyful ditty tumbling insensibly from his lips. I eagerly await several of flavor myself that I may join a fellow in his state of elation. Mm. Now to the next question. Who exactly is the gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of this settee? As it happened a number of years ago now. A certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. Oh. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he's also arrived at my office in a mask. What? The gentleman's name, 
with William Gostrichman oh, von Orstein. <laughs> The king of Germany. <laughs> what? <laughs> In my memory, sir, if the mask worn by the gentleman is identical. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, there can only be no question that mask belongs to the king of Germany. No, no, it belongs to Cosmo. <laughs> it would appear that his majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him. And I decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. Why are you so big? <laughs> A well mannered monarch, indeed. <laughs> Do you agree, my dear fellow? <laughs> so, the identity of this mass visitor is in fact my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonder of the Great Exhibition. Exhibition. The King of Germany. <laughs> Girl, silence. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you young Iris. But you apparently, Nix, inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. A five pound note, I believe. I must say, as your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that you allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by his royal highness. Earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the king's secret. <laughs> and now, the final piece of the puzzle. What is this secret you tried to hide with your silence, Iris? I love these camera angles. Yeah. Ah yes, we need only follow that brief involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You were attempting to ups abscond with that coffee cup. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup? It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the midst of his high jinks. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite coffee cup has been broken <laughs> by the king of Germany, and I wish you tried to conceal it from me. Oh! <laughs> I shall have a bill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. <laughs> oh, he can get a refund, but I can't get a. Re Get payment from that bitch on the over the vac statue. This concludes painful. I'm going to kill something. <laughs> Gregson, come back from the dead so I can kill you. <laughs> I need a punching bag. We're not I'm right going there. to poison your fish and chips. With your silence as well, the fellow enjoys your wobbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? <sighs> this is a weird situation we find ourselves in. Um, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> but now I want to learn what he's singing. But something is rather troubling me. Pray, Miss Susato, do tell. Royal Highness, doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah! And you haven't said a word either, Iris. If Mr. Schultz had it all right, you might as well own up to it now. Reasoning it entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Yet another grievance, Mr. Naruhoto, surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently, the one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the King of Germany, it was the King of Bohemia. Good 
witness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gox has testified to that in court. In his words, I've come to see the Great Exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that mere error, that minor error to yourself. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Nettiehobo. That it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Minor. Yeah. <laughs> like the fears that make a double for the king of fucking Germany. Yes. Even Mr. Sean is willing to admit he might be slightly wide off the mark this time. Yeah. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. In my favorite Incontrovertible. Cup. My favorite coffee cup is no more. No. So, shall we embark again? On a joint presentation of her show logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. You're an idiot, Sean. <laughs> This will be my. This will be the final course correction. Really? Yeah. Imagine they bring this back in A7. Oh, my sword came! <laughs> nice. So, what? It's some mix of hers that gives you the urge to sing? Goodness, I should like to try some. Shut up, TV. What's that? I like you to... And I like to hear you singing. But this man... Just how long does he intend to keep up with that tune? Do you, do you suppose... Give me a minute, I'm doing a live, a, a live sword unboxing. It looks like he's been stuck still the entire time, and if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. It, the box oh, is huge. Reaction. It's like three feet long. It's a katana, what do you expect? I know, but it's long. <laughs> I could put the end of life at the end of Iris' game. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Okay. Indeed, for no well bred, for no well bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it would appear that the fellow is unconscious. Ah, the There's a box inside the bigger box. box. Troubling. I ask you, Mr. Nohodo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? How should I know? It's time to open the tiny box inside of the bigger box. But never mind. On with the deduction. Wait. Okay. Yep, that's definitely it. And there's a poster. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> Yo, this is huge! 
someone's kitty, they got a new weapon. This is awesome, dude. Is it real or fake? Yo! Yo. <laughs> okay, good. It doesn't hit the floor when I hold it. <laughs> If you're, if you're like using that, if it's, you're like using a real Wee! katana for, oh, yeah, for cosplay stuff, uh, you know that some cons will not allow you in, right? <laughs> Although we already established I was actually the king of Bohemia. Seems Mr. Shums intends to persist with his Germany theory for some reason. Come to think of it. The young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Wee! Okay, I probably shouldn't swing this around. I the boy whom you I'm gonna hit here. something accidentally. Don't remind me, or anyone else. Yeah, I gotta take pictures of this later. It's awesome! Uh, did you hear me, Neo? No. <laughs> uh, I have my headphones you're off. you're using a real katana for- It's not real! It's not real! It's fake! Okay. It is made like, of bamboo. Well, some cons will not let you in, right? I know, I know. That's why I wanted a fake one. <laughs> and I don't trust myself with a real weapon anyway. Of mainland Europe, wear masks. I'm sure it is. It is a bamboo sword. It will not purposefully hurt anyone. Well, probably anyway. The joint. The point is, the mask doesn't belong to. Do you got your stabbing license? <laughs> That's awesome, oh, that's dude. Fine, as we well know. Because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Is it good? I don't know. I don't know what this is. Take that! Yes, there can be no question. That mask belonged to Cosmo Asogi. In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. Only you could try to make that sound positive. Cosmo's mask had been languishing on this metal chest for several days. So that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. But it's now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only to excuse ourselves in advance, gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. I... I don't believe it. Miss Susato, you must be Miss. No, I think not, Mr. Shoms. Then it would appear our logical reasoning has once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor. It's my unconscious father, Yudimi Kotoba. Logic and reasoning, or just looking and saying. Um, the holster is really nice, too. Ooh, and it's got a whole belt with it, too. Jeez. Which leaves us with one remaining imp- Oh, wait, I already read that. Okay. Your sword- your sword opening is pretty fucking loud. I'm sorry. Like, I'm... I've... And I haven't been able to pay attention at all to what's going on either. So that's a five pound note poking out from Iris's knapsack, is it? Uh, you... You'll pay attention when the video comes out on youtube.com slash Nick. Nick! Oh, oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know. I'm not even sure we see any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway. 
Anyway, Father would never have paid money for Iris' silence. He certainly seemed like the silent type himself, though, judging by his persistent state. Must be some other reason for Iris' silence, I suppose. Perhaps so Iris is trying so hard not to give away with her eyes. It's something entirely different. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. An excellent observation from upon closer inspection. There is something different about the chest appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. Mia, are you dead? No! <laughs> but it is simple enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I really I... need to open this chest. What? Here we go! <laughs> He's dead. Yay! Oh, Lily, I told you not to open it. Why do you have that in the chest? What is this fucking... <laughs> this fucking... The, the mask type bullshit. Ah, so you found your voice now, Iris. In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... Oh, now he's carrying on with the deduction without showing. Oh, yeah. It's somewhat different from the usual dance of deductions you perform with Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? She almost went fucking up. a lot of feet in the air. Well, he left me alone on the bath on the ballroom floor, so I'm going to have to dance this next part solo. Anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so. You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Just by you know, the knowing point of the finger before her. Miss Suzanto, sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh God, no! <laughs> That's the same thing Phoenix said. <laughs> it's a saying that's been carried on through generations. Hey, <laughs> Kill your brother. I wish I could. <laughs> I'll beat him up with you a have, sword. You have the means of doing so <laughs> <I> now. <laughs> so... Oh, well, did I say so? Where am I gonna put this? <laughs> I think we'd better examine Iris more closely and try to rescue the situation then. On your sword handling place. My what? <laughs> your sword handling place. I don't just have a place like that. Your sword your soul your sword holder. Oh yeah, I do have I do have that. But like I don't have clear space on any of like my cabinets. Or not cabinets, like my drawers and bookshelves. I don't have clear space for that. 
Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back! Let me just lay it on that chair over there. Ah! When Mr. Shaw was thrown into the air before... Just before you caught out, you tried to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands, no doubt. The key to the chest. Oh, she got the key in her mouth. Oh. Ew. Yeah, I don't know if you want to put metal in your mouth, Iris. You're so... You're so clever, Runo! So now it becomes clear, thanks to Mr. Sholem's graphic demonstration, <laughs> we can well imagine what happened here. What? Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest, only to be punched into the air. And land sprawled <laughs> on the settee. <laughs> Fucking Naruhodo said, maybe they're gay? And she thought they like, but wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. Wait, that doesn't explain all the facts? God damn, what is happening in there? <laughs> what about the stylish scarf? The cup of tea, above all. Why would he be wearing yeah. Masama's mask? Why? Well, for those curious details, I could think of only one explanation. Clearly, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. The miracle happened. Isn't that right, Iris? <laughs> miracle happened. Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikotoba opened the chest completely unaware of what awaited him inside, the mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. Oh, that sounds God. impossible. <laughs> it's the fucking... It's the... Magician's cape thing all over again, where it's like, how? <laughs> and the teacup's journey through the air and ended within the caught on the un unconscious professor's finger. That's also impossible. Yeah, with how his hand is positioned, there's no way! You, you mean to say to the stylish scarf? It's actually just a tablecloth. This is the great detective's office, after all. A place of miraculous deductions. <laughs> Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, Runo! Let's conclude Ryo no Suke Naruhodo's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. Aww. <laughs> He's learned a lot. Well, so then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? Objection! Oh, no, <laughs> Objection! <laughs> An admirable performance, Mr. Naruhodo! <laughs> But in the final act of the show, that you rather miss everything of importance. M Mr. Sholmes? If you will cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. I was clearly you're hiding a great secret. Oh, this uh. is different. She is? From the look on her face. Mr. Sholmes must be right. Whatever that great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to upscon with that coffee cup. He was not over that cup. It really is a shame about Mr. Sholmes' cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Mikotova opened the chest. Dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction had taken a different direction, Ivor doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other 
other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time. Stop looking at me with those big old eyes. What? What did I see here? Uh, no. A case file. Case file? You were attempting to obscure with that case file! Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Oh no! We visited Scotland. Oh. She took it! She took it! We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. And Dr. Gory informed us that the autopsy report Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. She must have taken it as soon as she left. Yeah. Clint Van Zeeks. Hmm. Yes, I do seem to recall. That some years ago, I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? What? I... I... You mean, it was you, Iris? <laughs> so those papers you have there are... I'm sorry. I can't be mad at you. Oh, oh, no. oh forgive me. Now I really can't be mad at you. Okay, let's see. And he's disappointed. In truth. I'm not mad. Just as I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. It was very nearly the late consulting detective Herlock Jones. Uh I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Is there something in it that troubled in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. <clears throat> when I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was. What? Why? I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing. Your father's writing. What do you really mean? Iris? It must be something that's hard for her to that's talk so about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellow. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? <laughs> I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the set he has been somewhat forgotten. Uh, yeah, I don't even talk about it. Totally. Don't care, Lord Dumb. <laughs> We should find our guests somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Naruto! Yes? Would you be 
so kind to lend him your bed. We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh. Yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. Wait, why my bed, not your bed? <laughs> your bed's literally right there in the next room. Well, yeah, but it's my bed! Whoa, it suddenly wow. just started raining really hard. So much rain! But where's the code? Where's the code? No, no, I can manage alone, thank you. You have a key to enjoy. Oh, and lightning. We wouldn't want Iris brew this stew. He picks him up with one arm. Because mm -hmm. there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than drag him upstairs like a trunk. <laughs> I wonder. Perhaps I was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Shulman making himself scarce to give Iris a chance to talk more freely. Jesus, it's raining down hard. Thunder. Thunder. The thunder. <laughs> Lightning and the thunder, thunder, thunder. Hey, that's all. <laughs> and yeah, we keep making a reference. We must to it. use this opportunity to talk with Iris. I <laughs> Thunder. <laughs> Belmont. Find out what's going on. Why, Iris? Your daddy. <laughs> Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? Yes, daddy. I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. That's right! Ellie told me, you see. He said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. Yeah. Oof. That's one way of describing it. Then. When I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree, too! Well, well, that's only natural, I suppose. <sighs> she will run circles around Emma. <laughs> yeah. With all respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. There was one thing I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made about his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? Yes! was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting, I thought to myself. 
because it was the same as the writing you see on your father's case notes? Exactly! I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that that was the first and last time we'd be allowed to even look at it in there. Oof. So you decided to, to steal it. Understandable. Well, I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here. There was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report. Read Dr. John H. Wilson. So that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided there and then that I'd write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. This character's great. <laughs> Yeah. I had no idea the stories I had had such quite such a just deep, deep personal significance for you. I'll be back. Alrighty. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. Understandable. I must apologize, Iris. Oh. This is really all my fault. Holly? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right. I keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gory and apologize, I promise! Yes. We'll go together, I think. Oh. Then let me look after it for you until we get there. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mrs. Shonov is here for her, but still. What? How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Shones? Oh boy. Mr. Shones? Bake. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> welcome oh, back. Dear me. So, you noticed that I see. Th 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 that would mean. What on earth's the matter, Miss Susato? You turn as white as a sheep. Bear that same thing again. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Naruhodu. The one from 10 years ago. The writing. What? 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 Huh? What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. Uh, what? Uh. This writing. What? What the what? <laughs> no, what the fuck? What the fuck? What? Man, man, uh, Miko told the fuck around and find out. <laughs> What? <laughs> Professor Miko Toma? Indeed, it's true. <laughs> hey, 
And now you know, my dear fellows. No! I don't know anything! <laughs> yeah, I feel you were in this game. Well, it's up to all me, Mr. Sholmes! Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind is just too extraordinary <laughs> to believe. Please, you have to explain. He fucked around and found out, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> what is that part you don't understand? <laughs> so, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotova then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Wait, I need to check again. Yeah, it's possible. Not possible. Mm -hmm. My dear fellow, pray take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways. Oh, this must this must feel horrible, Mr. Sato. It makes a great deal of sense. It it does. Ten years ago. It's when father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikotoba engaged? Of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the content and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. I see. So I just got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. It is very understandable, of course. There goes my toilet. <laughs> what a complicated situation. So, Susato, you got a half little sister now. I'm yeah, you got a half sister. Oh God, Apollo and Trucy all over again. <laughs> well, this time they at least know about it. Cause Lamar and Phoenix won't fucking tell them. <laughs> Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Jones, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Uh, just when I told Apollo finds out that he's part of the magician family, like, nah. <laughs> And we really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Do he really exist or not? Ah, you come straight to the point, I see. I'm like and a snake. Come straight to the answer. I'm like a snake. I'm not always straight. Sorry, I'm, I'm officially distracted by wrestling. This muted fucking peak. Well, yeah, we'll peak. We're this. burning buildings down. It's peak. Well, yeah, we'll peak this. Wait, where is it? This Saturday is going to be live murder. Damn it, I lost it. I believe I was explained in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And, and did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? <laughs> Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, 
Where's your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this optimized report and the records of all your old cases were penned by the same hand, and if the optimized report was written, though not signed, by your famous partner, there will be only one logical conclusion! Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Eugene Mikotova. In other words, Ms. Susato's father. On my word, Mr. Naruhoto. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction! You... You mean to say... Allow me to introduce you... To my great friend and partner, Miko Tova! Professor Miko Toba, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but you're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self. Yuji Miko Toba, your father. Oh, of course. This is obviously too much for Susato son to take in. <laughs> I must say, though, how my old friend has attended worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me. When was it again, Mikotova? Sixteen years ago, Shones. Ah, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Sashiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodging close to the hospital. Some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just... Wrestling tweets. Killing me. What a bad year to be injured and named Eddie Kingston, because they're fun- The winds are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right. So I decided I needed someone to share lodging at the expense. And was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little gain. When the situation of the prohibition led us to us pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe it was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous case presented itself. The case with which you become rather familiar yourself. The Professor Killings. After the trial, Sashiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it! And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Shon's famous partner. Father. Goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you're the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And, and that is? You know very well what it is. Unresolved matter of Iris's father. Ah! Of course, I almost forgot about that one. I 
should have seen this coming, I suppose. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> My mom came home and was looking at the sword. Ah. Uh, I was told that. Just in time, we're getting to find out who the father is. That's all she knows is about the great detective's adventures that are- You the are the father! Were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Sh if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner, father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris' father must be you. Ah! Upon my word, Miss Suzato. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grabbed the art of deduction. What? What you've always told me, Father. Is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain. And I've always accepted that. But... All this about Iris... Oh, there it is. She's on the sun's ice-cold stare. Oh, now hold on now. Now hold on a minute. It, it was very complicated. I mean, it's it's really not what you think. Uh oh. Oh, she's she's ready to fucking throw him across the room. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot just before she. No, really, you got the wrong end of the stick. Show him. Say something, man. <laughs> That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. But, Mr. Sholmes, when did he get all dressed up? It's <laughs> <laughs> the same. <laughs> You're stupid, Miss, Mr. Naruto. Well, as I don't like to interrupt the exciting expl exploration of the past. <laughs> You're stupid, Ryunosuke. See ya! <laughs> we get over a higher urgent matter that requires a short excursion. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So get your coat, Mikotoba. The game is afoot. Hey, it's played. Oh, it's the music. Yeah. Da 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 I mean, his outfit, I mean. You haven't changed one Oda, have you? I mean, really, I visited our home after ten long years, and when I opened that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. <laughs> and if it wasn't enough, when I eventually regained consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all of this! Now. What? I have no doubt that whatever happened, you're acting in everyone's best interest.
trust you completely. <laughs> and sending a great detective and his great partner off on a renewed adventure together. Oh, Susato. Very well, then. We'll speak again later. So I believe your own work is done for today. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. What is this role reversal I'm seeing here? Like with costumes, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yes, Naruto. Good luck in battle. And you're reaching a decision. A decision? About whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. So much happened that day so much that, happened I, barely that, day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later, that, only be I later that I come to realize how amidst the chaos, how amidst the chaos I unleashed were all the clues, all the clues I needed, I needed finally to finally unearth the truth. The truth. And that all the and turmoil, turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to, give me the resolve to, see, to see everything through. through. Yo, dude. And... And, and, oh. yep. <laughs> wow. Are you forgetting someone? Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I'm still stuck in jail. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. Wow, and that was that was the fourth, the final Jeez. chapter. The resolve. Are we on the final one? Oh no, I don't want it to end. <laughs> it's gonna have to. I don't want it to end. Go back to the microwave. The resolve of Ryanosuke Naruhodo. This fucking world line is so fucking long. <laughs> Help me, I'm in Yu-Gi-Oh hell. <laughs> I don't like how dark it is. <laughs> Why am I stuck in a card game anime? <laughs> Why are you having fun over there? Ooh, new anti-chamber music. Mm. So, the time's finally come. Seven and a half hour long trial! Today we unravel everything. We Someone... would not be unraveling everything. Someone's <laughs> back might be aching in there. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Miss Susato. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's my back from carrying this game. Uh, Miss Susato? <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Naruhomo? Um, nothing. I was just saying that I'll be relying on your support today, but... I'm so sorry. Of course, I, I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Would you mind helping me to my feet, then? Oh dear, I, I'm, I'm really very sorry. Sato-san isn't her usual self at all. But that's hardly the problem. Did they, they just didn't do the trial? It is Ben Zeke is suddenly the prosecutor again with no explanation. <laughs> she just I'm back, out. bitches. <laughs> She just found out that her father is Sorry, the all, I am just came built detected, different. not to mention. <laughs> ah, good morning, sir. Lord Van Zeek! Hey. Ah, Shiza. <laughs> Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What? Did I hear that correctly? I'm still going to call you a slur. <laughs> but... I... Oh, um, no. Nothing. Just... I hope we could clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says, I hate you. But his words are... <laughs> almost jovial today. But his words are, I hate you. <laughs> in fact, he I has... hate you, but in a funny accent. 
In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Hold out Scythe. Lord Van Six isn't, Lord, the, isn't the Reaper, Mr. Naruhodo. Good point. Die, die, die! The Vapor. It was in hindsight. I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit accepted acceptance of that. Stood. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend. Does that led to all of this? But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeek. Yeah, I am. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank... Ah! <laughs> ah! Stabs, runs out of the courtroom. <laughs> 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 Ah! I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? Serrated blade. Oh. There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. Why are you surprised about this? I'm pretty sure I've told you this like three times. <laughs> that having been slain by that evil killer, Prince will let the spirit return to some sort of demigod. To feel this deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we heard that story too. You did indeed told us. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so... In some small way, I wonder if perhaps those wounds made me feel his absence a little less keenly. Damn, prosecutors will do whatever, everything except for go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> for real. I believe in the ghosts! Even if I knew it was just an illusion. Just some nonsense conjured by an over-imagination imaginative public. Overactive imagination? He's obviously so stealing that thing from you. Have, you. My Nipponese friend. Lord Clint Van Zeek. <laughs> well... well What's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that. That's all that matters. I know that you didn't take anyone's life, even though you really want to. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. Pulls out gun. Yep. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all the lie and deception. I cannot deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of, of absolute integrity. I'm still going to call you slurs. Thank you. <laughs> not, not that part. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time he compliments him, I'm still going to call you slurs, but. Now tell me. Why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, Iris, why did you get here? Dad! <laughs> you can't make that joke anymore. John H. Wilson isn't her father. Shoots it. Uh, um, 
got you one of my special blends. Holly loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you. Surely it's the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Oh? Huh? Sort of subdued, I suppose. Not? What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Sight's laboratory. Alright then, good luck to you both! I have to make a move now! You're not staying? I thought you wanted to watch today's proceedings. Well, I like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh, yes. Would you take this? Oh. Isn't that one of your little felt dolls that usually dangly from your knapsack? It's a lucky charm! A little Hurley that I made once. A Hurley? Looks more like a Hair Lee to me. If for some reason you completely run out of options for the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can! What? Pull his ears? That's right! It's a way to bring good luck! I think you might need it. It's a it's cute. Yeah. Y you think what we'll need is luck? I just need to peek inside the courtroom. I got you. Haha. Cute. And it seems very different than normal. Gonna be surprised who's the providing the presiding judge is gonna be. Uh, is it gonna be Jigoku? No, it's Canadian judge. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Shum's Iris? That's the bitch. I don't know. 
It was out all night and he hadn't come home by the time I left this morning. <laughs> no, he ended up in DVD. Oh, I see. Was Professor Meagle Tova out all night too? Do you think, Miss Susato? Yes, it seems so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. Apparently, they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. Jeez. They? Father that, and that, Judge that, that got me going into prison. Judge Goku, too? <laughs> That's right. Nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. Yeah. The fuck it, yeah. yeah. I think I was been missing for a while, and I'm starting to worry. He went back to Australia, aka hell. Good luck then, Reno. Good luck, Susie. Yes, yeah, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It's very soothing. You put the stuff in it, right? Oh, I'm so glad! <laughs> we must go inside now, Lord Venzi. Huh. Lord Van Zee has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My boyfriend, Kazuma Asogi. <laughs> I trust more than anyone else in the I'm world. I'm going to kill him dead. <laughs> now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day, to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. I'm too used to the fucking dual destinies and spirit of justice door opening. <laughs> I miss that shit. It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. Our cold stares pierced me like knives from all sides today. Whoa, God. Lord Stronghold? Sup, bitches. <laughs> Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, the events have come to light that threaten brought the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution. The subsequent unlawful shooting of the man. And the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak.
is the third time we've seen a judge with legs. No, fourth time. By royal decree, decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. Ah, I don't like that he's standing. And, oh. watch, and one over which I, male strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. He's fucking huge. Yeah, whoa. Yeah. Dude. The, the six jars flames just... I'm a pyromancer, bitch. As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of the judiciary, assembled to bear witness to the fair <laughs> judicial process. But there's no one. No, there's some people here. In other words, a collection of your acolytes. Lord Strongheart. Don't you get sassy with me, young boy. <laughs> we'll get the get they're, mask. They're all ghosts. Oh, don't bring out the get mask. No, don't do that. No, no, I would hate <laughs> that. God damn it, he's horny. On a personal note, I find it most distressing. Lord that seeks. a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother Clint, in fact. Hmm. Damn! What the joking. Jesus, dude? In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. That was a loud ass gavel on my end. For the Ow. trial of Barack Van Zeeks! Who officially stands accused of murder? Why does this song sound like an Elden Ring boss fight? <laughs> Why do I hear boss music? <laughs> Together we shall unravel the very courts. <laughs> Curse you, bear! <laughs> Like... Forefathers won it all! <laughs> I like the Counsel music, for though. the prosecution and defense. Are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord! You don't sound ready. As is the prosecution. I'm ready! I'm ready! I'm ready! Who need the fuck? See, Santa's ready. ready. <laughs> oh, wait. Is that ready enough? She's also shut up. <laughs> Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. Yes, I know, it was quite shocking. Person yelling in the background. <laughs> there was a He's just a gallery the... member that just randomly screams. Aside <laughs> to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson. That was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Bailiff take the boots to the hard <laughs> style. Yes. He was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. I need to look up his theme song after this. Mm. Judge Strongheart. That name goes hard. Mm.
in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daily Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification. Oh, I hate that name! <laughs> and present and present himself around the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's se session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear that he buried his memories in of time deep inside himself as a means of self because while he was engaged as chief warder of the uh, Barclay prison, he abetted a convict's escape. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinners. Did you keep that thing in your pants? <laughs> He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. <laughs> He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the Red-Headed League. Brings us to the crucial in issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed the suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. Which is largely based on the discovery that the victim's pocket watch had, been, had not been wow. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. I met once again with the coroner <laughs> with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. Yeah, that's why I've moved on to uh, the stage of acceptance. <laughs> I <win>. she, <laughs> she confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on 31st October, the day before his body was discovered. I know you haven't accepted this. Your hair sucks. On Halloween, <laughs> it was Halloween. I have here an updated autopsy report. The uh, updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. Okay, you're just as right. Why am I here in the past? Yep. Is that Grandpa Van Zeeks? <laughs> Ah, my grandchild! <laughs> Go. Are you just as gay as I am? <laughs> good, good. He's almost as straight, gay as I am straight! <laughs> we don't talk about you. <laughs> I'll be in the next one! <laughs> oh god. Yippee, yeah, that's Kaya! Yippee, Kaya! Yeah! But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday. Let them be clear. Wow. <laughs> At the time of death was 5 p.m. on the 1st of November. There were indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. Oh, here we go. Here comes the... I'm using my rights as That's judge to throw some stuff out the window. Yeah. Do you have a problem with my process? I'm just pointing out the facts. You don't need to get mad about them. Gee! <laughs> that's the 
that's out of the question. There will be no there are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accom accommodate a human corpse. Ooh, thank. Oh, and also, and also, he wasn't using his authority. It was just straight up. It's like there's no fridges that big. <laughs> But he, you, but he's denied the fact that. Well, yeah, true. But he's denied the fact that the body was chilled. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Oh, hey, he's actually giving, he's actually giving us time to investigate. Okay. Thank God. See, you're get, you're being a little bitch. You. <laughs> Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it would give a renewed significance to the movements of the victim the day before the Fresno Street incident. It would, yes. Especially since on that day. Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his we real movements. We don't know why! That's why we're in the courtroom! <laughs> it's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Bailiff, get the hammers! <laughs> Do I sense that the prosecution has some information regarding these activities? Uh... <laughs> oh, good, they are being taken. Doing good... The bailiffs do a good job around here. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now! Gina! State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade, reporting! Representative of Scotland Yard! A self conferred rank, but never mind. Gina? Again? What's your problem, Odo? What's with that Gina again? Look, eh? Ah! The most meant the world to me! It done more for me than anyone else ever did! That's just rude. I'll oh, hide a wife, you know. Don't you know? Oh? Inspector Gregson, you mean? Yeah, that's my dead. dead he got me out of the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. Aren't you dead? Yeah, Tell me that I can have a purpose. What kind of shoes you got in there? <laughs> so that's all, I'm the best person to be standing here speaking for him. Skip and die. There she is. Right. Ah, oh, the goodness of Gregson's heart? Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes, no. It could have been both. What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. A oh, strong heart knew. So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. All y'all detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. 
And a little sub to the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret, secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealing that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what saw the Reaper at the place too! Smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what was written in the book! Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines. Goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they're disposed of at irregular black markets and that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. So I suspect that Gregson was investigating one of those black markets? been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigation being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority, without the Yard's knowledge. And do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London Gentleman's Club. Oh, I know what that is. And on the day in question, the accused is known to have been there. Oh, hey, I know this mission. I've, I've played Be Happy Few. <laughs> That's the conclusion of Skull and Zero's investigation into the matter. Don't play Be Happy Few. It's a bad game. That can't be. We haven't heard anything it about is. any of this. <laughs> Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question. The accused, Barack Van Zeeks, was present. He was fooling around in there, I take it. <laughs> that would be very significant testimony, then. Oh my, but, but... Lord Van Zeeks has made no mention of this at all! In short, Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. Ah, oh, God! Like, I don't know if you can hear that gavel, but it's... It is kind of loud. <laughs> Louder than usual. Louder than the usual gavel, and this one is fucking metal. DONG! <laughs> God, that... Wait, where, 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 where's pipe start? <laughs> <laughs> metal pipe swallowing. God, that fucking metal, that fuck. <laughs> close as I can get. I don't think I have a metal pipe falling sound in Discord. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Well then, counsel, for the defense, begin your cross-examination. Gong, gling, long! <laughs> We're actually gonna save it here. Alrighty. Alright. I finally got my application in. Nice.